wherever you are. Lord, by your power, by your power, encounter my life. Make sure you are praying wherever you are. Encounter my life by your power. Are you praying outside? Outside, are you praying? Those following us online, are you praying? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Please turn to your left, to your right. Just shake hands with somebody. Make them welcome to God's presence. And be seated. Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 very quickly Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 the scripture speaking in the book of Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1 it says and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same children became mighty men which were of old men of renown and God saw something that has never been a detail in the creation account before a new vocabulary was introduced into creation wickedness and God saw that the wickedness of man was great listen we have witnessed sin we have witnessed rebellion we have witnessed a departure from the ordinance of God but immediately there was a mixture between certain spirits certain creatures and the daughters of men the bible says they introduce a new kind of breed that the children that were born unto this ungodly unholy union they were giants and the bible made it clear that they were not only giants in the earth in those days it says and also afterwards please tell the person by your side afterward the different shape and the different mode of expression of the Nephilims, the unholy union between this rebellious clan of spirits that have left their first estate and the daughters of men, the children that they were able to bring into time, the Bible called them giants. It will interest you to know that in the same account of Genesis chapter 6 this was where the whole conversation of the judgment for the, for the world to cleanse the world with a flood this was where that particular conversation began because God wanted to wipe the face of the earth because the wickedness of man has become unbearable 
But God was not particularly interested in cleaning the whole lineage of man. He wanted to preserve a pure breed because the genetic pool has been defied. You don't even know which family is carrying the traits of these giants anymore. And it will interest you to know that although only Noah and his family found favor in the sight of God, later you will see Goliath again. How did they preserve the gene of this rebellious kind? This is why, while they were giving these accounts, they made sure that they made it clear that the giants were also afterward. So the flood was not sufficient enough to wipe the slate of their traits. The character entered into genetic details and was concealed there. Waiting for a time where you are not watching, they will manifest again. It is so clear that their new way of expression is no longer giants in size and stature. They know that it will be too visible. So there will be people with an unusual penchant for wickedness. For a human being to accost another human being and see a pregnant woman who is most vulnerable, kill her, open her womb, remove the little Jesus Christ and still tear that, that little baby's there is a, a level of departure. He's not a human being again. I also want to share something with us. It will interest you to know also that when God was allotting judgments to the various parties that played a role in the fall of man, when it came to the serpent, the Bible says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and the woman's seed. Please say the seed of the serpent. I am trying to to tell you that not every one of us that names the name of the Lord, not every one of us are from the Lord. There are people that there is no amount of evangelism that can convert their soul. They, they came from a source. They are of their father, the source, and they are not hiding it. Hey. One of the places where we clash the most is on the metaverse. They are so, so vocal about what they stand for. And they are so particular about spreading a government of defilement. What do you say about a, a lady who is supposed to be decked with a level of, you know, shyness, a level of reservation? A lady puts her naked body on public display, having intercourse with a stranger and record it. And she's not thinking that maybe one day I will give birth. What will my children say? No, those ones are not human beings. They are amongst us, but they are not with us. There are two different species of creation. There is the seed of the serpent and there is the seed of the woman. We have not even talked about the sons of God yet. We are just talking about normal carnal men. Among carnal men, you will find two flavor. There are those who came, their work is to affront the, the agenda of a particular kingdom. It is such ones Jesus spoke about when he says, Upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church. But there are people you should be cautious of. They are called the gates of hell. It is through them that people will journey into Hades. They are the, 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 the arrangement that has been put inside time to allow people to walk into hell uninterrupted. A gate of hell will be waiting, trusting God that one day you will hit the brick. You will hit a vulnerable moment. You will beg a gate of hell for 1,000 naira. He will, he will vow that he does not have. He is rather going to buy beer worth 50,000 for you that same evening. Because the, everything around him is for a kingdom. And he knows he is intentional about deploying everything about him. The gate of hell will not buy you beer forever. He is only going to pamper you into darkness until you too have been discipled. When your soul is colonized, he will cut off that supply. Because he knows that from then, the yearning, the taste, you by yourself will start looking for it. He has won his soul. He will go and look for another. He will sit down like this. The gate of hell will say, oh boy, where are you there now? They cannot rest. They are trying to draw somebody else into a way of corruption. A gate of hell will be telling you, ha! Ah. The other day I sit down with that girl. She just asked me about your number. They, they are so particular about making sure they are not the only ones living in compromise. Please tell somebody by your side, evangelism. Just in case you are not winning soul, there are people who are intentional. They, they cannot be alone inside that way of corruption. So they are particular about making sure that the, 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 
particular nature that they represent continues to spread. It will interest you to know that there are small streets, as small as the street is, there is a clash between gates of hell and churches on that street. Unfortunately, the church that is fighting the gates of hell is, is not a building. Because the, the gate of hell also is not a building. So if all the church has become is a particular location, we will not be able to fight the mobile gates of hell. Because they, they are everywhere. They are always quick to whisper their opinion on every matter, which antagonizes the position of the kingdom. A gate of hell will stay on your matter until it convinces you that you are, you are, ah, that you are not wise. Because he is trying to sell the opinion of their kingdom to you. A gate of hell will convince you that serving God is a waste of time. And if you are not careful, you will, you will buy that school of thought. And since we now know that wickedness is a particular description of the state of the earth on account of aliens that has found expression amongst us. If it is only man, there are, there are kinds of things you will never hear because it is not in our nature to do those things. But because certain elements have come to contribute, the Bible introduced a new vocabulary that has never been mentioned. Even though man was a sinner, but they have not ascribed wickedness yet. They introduced wickedness on the account that there is now an ungodly union. And the offspring of this ungodly union have an unusual penchant for wickedness. Guess what? There is one way to probe whether the Nephilim are still with us or not. Whether the giants are still manipulating the scale or not. Whether we are alone. The Bible says we are of God and the whole world. Please tell the person by your side the whole world. Because I know that if I don't establish this line upon line and precept upon precept, many of us would, would at a point, we would get distracted. The whole world lieth in wickedness. You know that particular vocabulary we are talking about? It means that wherever you find wickedness at work, you can trace the finger of the things that brings wickedness. I want to reiterate a point that is already established. Man has no capacity to execute some level of departure unless he's aided by a spirit. And there is this kind that we see in the world as it is now. It is only a sign that those things that has happened before is happening again. There is an ungodly union. Strange things are beginning to find expression because bodies are being made available for them. Let me share something with us very quickly. Maybe it will help somebody decide to put more emphasis on the life of consecration and secret purity. Just in case God gives his opinion, his perspective on any matter. And let's take marriage as a case study. And God gives his perspective on marriage. And part of God's perspective is that the bed undefiled. And it is in God's opinion that both of you will not know yourself outside the honoring of his own terms and condition. So you now use all kinds of Hollywood influence and say you are dating. And I mean, I mean, I mean, in this modern world, who is still doing that thing that they will not know yourself until they get married? Come on now, as you are speaking English, see what now happens. It came to pass on a particular day hey, let, me, let me use the sister in this case so she now came visiting your house and it was FM that was playing so inspiration was given to the guys on the other end to put a, a particular sound that on that kind of event, once that sound is on ground, it, it will take Jesus. <laughs> then the cloud, the clouds began to gather. And the weather became chilled. 
every see all the factors that must play together to make sure that even you you will say heaven is giving us a sign <laughs> can i share something with you the real advantage of satan is not actually our action it is the fact that we did what we did contradicting God's instruction. Sex in itself is not wrong. It is sex outside the provision of God that is wrong. And all he wants is to create a situation where our actions violate God's instruction. That's all. Now on that day, it will now look like, oh, it is, it is just too young love beds who are in love that you know i mean come on even god will understand we love ourselves we even eventually we even still marry so in fact i've engaged her don't don't pretend you see some of you, you are smiling <laughs> these are some of the debate that happen in your mind then you now carried out that act of fornication what you have done is that you have opened a channel for spirits to have a stake as regarding that intercourse that happened. Hey, I'm trying to explain, in case you don't know what I'm trying to drive at, I'm trying to explain how spirits got bodies for themselves. How they were able to secure a body to begin to put their intentions to work. There are children that will be born with unusual proclivity towards iniquity. Nobody taught them. The inspiration came as follow come. The penchant for, for evil is, is inherent. And they became like that because of the condition in which they were formed. Because the laws of God was not particularly upheld. So any spirit that was camping around that your disobedience, he will have a stake in your harvest. You know what David gave us? His only defense. When the prophet of God came to expose his iniquity that he has worked so hard to conceal. He says, behold, I was shaping in iniquity. He says, in sin did my mother bear me. He knows that there is a penchant inside my vessel that is always gravitating towards iniquity. And he says, it is due to the way I came into time. Is this one is only a man that is deep in priesthood that can investigate backward to know that this is not a matter of resolution. There is something I have discovered in my vessel that is even before I know the difference between good and bad, I naturally gravitate towards iniquity. You will give demons an upper hand in the life of your children when you open that door through rebellion. You will make a whole generation enter into a new level of captivity. While you, you will die and leave battles behind. A young man who is supposed to walk into ordination walk into ordination you will make sure it will take more than 20 years before he even understands the way of freedom because when he opens his eye it was chains he saw on his hands how did he enter captivity it was they that bear him they entered into that participation and they allow iniquity to become part of that economy on the strength of that iniquity satan has a stake on the harvest imagine you are planting and satan came and also put one of his seed it means in the day where men harvest, he will come to that field because he has a stake in that land. If, if you know how secured, if you know how secured holiness will make your life be like, holiness is your advantage. It, it, will, not, it will not add anything to God. All the laws of God are in the light of what will happen if you violate it. So it is mercy that gave us those rules. The things I'm sharing, like a joke, as I'm talking like this, we already have that experiment in our midst. There are many people that don't understand freedom. They have never tasted of ventilation in their soul. They open their eye into layers of captivity. Guess what the spirits are hoping? That you too, you will continue to walk in this way of rebellion, this way of sexual immorality, and that when you concede your own seed, the next thing you will bring another into will not be old. 
because that spirit has journeyed in that lineage from one generation to another so he does not only call them my house he can lay claim to how old he has stayed in that bloodline it is at that point spirits become vocal when you tell them leave they begin to also speak back on account of how long you took eh? a spirit has a stake in that matter I am trying to say with everything I'm saying that life is absolutely spiritual. When you have probed things from this side and there's no explanation, don't waste your money. Go and check in the world of spirits. What did they plant? Which seed fell upon my destiny? And many of us, you don't know. It's not your fault. It is the arrangement of the generation before you. I am not speaking as one that is oblivious to the things I am sharing with you. The first labor God had to prosper upon my life for was to uproot things that are not his planting. Things that I opened my eyes to discover. There are proclivities in my member. This is why I know that if I stay away from the word of God, there are tendencies that are inherent waiting for a time. I can just keep the dosage of scripture for a while. You will need to stay with scripture till you die because the day you stay away from it small, you will find out iniquity is like weed. When you uproot it, you don't need to plant it, it will grow again. Just mistakenly, eh? mistakenly go for just one month without prayer and, and see the things you catch yourself doing. That's when you will know that there is a treatment. There is a treatment everybody needs. There is a fall Adam brought everybody into. This one is apart from your own ancestor. And Adam already brought us somewhere. Then our, our forefathers added their own gara to the whole matter. There are families that nobody with honor will come from. A, a man has sold everybody into servitude. He had vowed on account of his selfishness. Once upon a time he was bedridden with illness. And he wanted to be healed at all costs. So he was not even ready to hear the condition. But, but anything, yes sir. Yes sir. They say, we, we, he didn't want to hear the terms. And everybody who come from his loins, he used the gift of headship upon him and wheeled them into captivity. The way one man can stand and say, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. It's not only God you can wheel your generation to. Your way can also wheel your seed to darkness. And they will not know why. Why strange spirits have access to their visions. Why strange spirits can visit them at night. It was one man that opened the door. And said if it is my lineage you can visit. I am pleading with someone this night. It is imperative that we don't start from a place of excitement. Look inward and find out. What is this seed? What is this seed? What is this appetite? Where is it coming from? You know it's not from you. It is the labor of a generation before you. So you must fight to come on. See, I have seen, I have seen that there are things. <laughs> Your children may not be as strong as you, sir. The work of David is to fight all the wars and give a, a period of peace to Solomon. A generation must wait on the altar and correct what another generation spoils so that another can enter into a way, a way that is cleared, a straight path that they can find their path in God. Till you fight small, as you fight small, you now felt it's just small ventilation for yourself. You don't know that if there's a copy of battle still waiting for your children. Why did you allow battle flow into another generation? This is why the devil is waiting for so many people on that junction of marriage. He knows, he knows all he wants is to invest a legacy of rebellion in a family and package a fine face package a tall handsome guy and all you are seeing is 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 high this is this is a very nice and you don't know the spiritual heritage you are about to mark register with in the day where the two become one spirits will take everything that is the legacy of that lineage it will flow into your own history Wickedness is the 
the order of the day. And since it is obvious from the days of John, they say this kingdom, the only way we can prosecute destiny is through violence. Only violent men will lay hold on their inheritance by force. Hey, so although God has an ordination for your life, that ordination will only be captured in the scrolls of heaven. It will never enter time until through violence you correct all the abnormality of your ancestors. Oh, forever, oh God. He says, thy word is settled, but it is only settled in heaven. How can it enter it? Through priesthood. Pray in this manner, Jesus says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. How will it come? Your will, what you want for my life, that thing you wrote, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we have found out that there is a dichotomy between your fashion in heaven versus your fashion on earth. In the heavens, you will be a deliverer. On earth, you will be a victim. Until the day you say, no, 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 no. I refuse to be living after another script. Saviors shall arise on Mount Zion and they will judge the mountains of Esau. Now the mountains of Esau continues to prosper because saviors cannot rise. How will they rise? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his holy mountains? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart that has not lifted up his soul unto vanity now sworn deceitfully. Can somebody cry? Can somebody cry?
Size the bodies of the spirit. The way you go to a hospital and the doctors ask you, How are you feeling? Eh? They need you to, because they are not able to, there are, there are certain signs and symptoms that are not visible. It, it, it is only internal. So you are the one that can explain how you are feeling. Guess what? There are other diseases that will leave physical signs. So when the doctor looks at those signs, he is able to arrive at a diagnosis very quickly. He knows what is wrong. There are periodic reports streaming from the world of spirits where every reality finds its roots from. Periodic reports from that realm. It will, it, will be, it will be submitted to your soul. The Holy Ghost will use encounters and dreams. He will use it to crystallize those particular reports so that you, your, your heart can be able to articulate exactly what they are trying to tell you. You, you will start your course in destiny. Start pursuit of God's purpose for your life. Begin to live life. And one day you will be sleeping. Eh? You will see that in the dreams of the night that you found yourself in a situation that necessitated and required motion but your leg was so too heavy and you don't know why you could not move your feet the way the way you wanted the feet to be moving and you knew you are capable of running faster than this but for some reason you were so slow in the dream that that is all the spiritual physicians have for you they just need you to they want to show you that as regarding prosecuting the purpose of god you don't have the required level of motion, speed to run within one lifetime and fulfill this. There is already an infirmity that makes that your motion is truncated. And sometimes when they want to bring deliverance to you, they will show you that there is danger and you are supposed to be making, making a distance from it. The more you are trying to run, it's like you are in one place. And people see this dream. Let me let me prove something to you so that you will know the matters we are speaking about is about spiritual infirmity. Spiritual infirmity. If you are in this hall and you have had that experience or something around it, lift your hand above your head. Look out. Just look around you. It's not, it's not for only you. You are not the only one. So it's just the way malaria is not for one person. If they see malaria in this body, they say, we know it, we have seen it in another place. Let's, let's leave that infirmity. Let me show you another infirmity. Have you seen yourself in an arrangement before where something honorable? Hey, no, no, no. No. Exam is coming. There's an examination approaching in the world of spirits. You knew in that encounter that there's an exam, but you were not prepared. And, and you could see that you were not prepared, but exam came. 
Sometimes you will see that you wrote an examination and the examiner collected everybody's script except your own. You did not submit. <laughs> it means that do anything physically possible. Do anything with your physical energy. If you like, do any kind of lobbying. There is a realm where they have, they have showed you that you, are, you have not passed into the next season. There is a class you will repeat because in that exam you did not pass it. They gave a submission to your soul. That, that, that believer, instead of him to go and check the root cause, what is wrong? He will, he will start jumping from one prayer house to another. He does not know yet that until the infirmity is treated. And the reason why they show you that one, they are showing you because what needs to be treated is from your own end. It's not with Satan, it's with you. There is something, there is a kind of provision, a way of life that has accommodated a particular kind of infirmity that makes it prosper upon you. So they draw your attention so that go to look for the medication that can treat this thing quickly. I go ahead and share about people who see themselves in public places but they are naked and they are ashamed in the dream trying to cover clothes are not so uh -uh. Uh -uh. they have taken honor from your life that shame will flow first from the realm of spirits then like a joke everything physical will become an attestation of a reality that has crystallized in the world of spirits you see it and instead of you to go to war quickly you you fold your hands and say the, the kind of dream what i see this night you know you know good i i saw something that is, that makes me restless oh god it's not about restlessness it's a call for priesthood some of you you will dream that there was something precious they gave to you then people started pursuing you and they collected it then you woke up haba haba people will have a dream that they gave birth and somebody stole their child and they were looking for the child until they woke up and you don't know yet you are thinking that there is something ahead for you in tomorrow they have stolen it already if tomorrow has anything you must find it first from the realm that they stole it from you know there is a lot of ignorance parading as knowledge <laughs> Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. You know where he builds from? He builds from a foundation that cannot be destroyed. It is from a realm, a realm where realities are crystallized from. Now you are seeing yourself you are seeing yourself inside your own dream but you are seeing yourself looking very lean different from how you look physically oh God, these are prescription matters they are showing you different things to treat but the average carnal man is not ready to labor You know what gave birth to this ministry? In the visions of the night, I was carried and I was kept in the front of a street. And the street looked so dark and shady with many cages. You know these agri chicken cages? As though they pile cages on themselves and the cages now went as high as skyscrapers but it was cages they arranged when i came closer to the street it was not chickens that were inside the cage it was human beings many un unnumbered they were inside cages in darkness some were holding the small small bar the cage look made them look like they were chickens they were that little inside the cage and there was there was there was this particular uh, personality that was trying to teach me a song i've shared this thing with some of you and they say if if i sing this song those people will be free while he was trying to teach me the song the people who were guarding those cages they began to chase me and the person who was teaching me the song i already knew my work will be around setting god's army free the end time army of the lord i know where we will find them from once upon a time 
there will be dry bones in Ezekiel 37. When they went to discover where they were found, they were dry bones. By the end of Ezekiel, you will find there are new nomenclature and exceeding great army. It is the same thing we are colliding with everywhere we go. You are my witness. Yesterday, by this time, we were in Calabar. I had not made an altar call yet. It was obvious that captivity is a register in every space. Captivity. The average human being must break out from something if he will answer the call of ordination. Nobody is given a breathing space. The only question is, what, what must you break out from? Because... They have ample time to study your bloodline. They have they studied your great 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 grandfather. They studied the other. They studied the other. They studied to your grand. So they know the particular scene that is the besetting scene of your bloodline. They don't need to be trying and trying to know where your area of weakness will be because they have handled many generations before you. The way the way you can just sit down and say, this family, this family. They are known with this particular trait. Eh? This is how spirits have files as regarding proclivities that are locking within genetic you know, traits of different families. They know. If anybody come out from that clan and begins to walk, begins to gain some knowledge in his work with God, they, they will say, go and bring the thing that brings the people down there. Ah, so this night we're all praying. Man, taka papa, shata taka tapa kate berete dosh. Your kingdom come. They will ignore you. They now heard that you are doing that thing. You have prosecuted priesthood for one week stretch, and that you continue. And you know, they are not affected and they are not disturbed by your prayer if your prayer is not in tandem with the will of God. Let me say this now to my generation: prayer is not a threat until it is prayed according to God's will. You can spend five hours just doing ATM arrangement and the devil is not disturbed. Lord, remember you said in your word. Lord, you promised me. If you finish everything you are doing, that prayer did not shake anything in his kingdom. He's, he's a self-centered man that has been shouting. The prayer that they will attack is, is that thy kingdom come. Thy will. I know I have a will, but I put my will aside. I devote this altar of priesthood to only bring into earth your plans and purpose. I have my own plans, but let my plan die inside your own. It is that, that man's prayer that they want to make sure he will not continue that prayer. If you think you are gaining millage in prayer, you are wasting time. If your prayer is not in the will of God. He's coming. He's coming for you. It won't be long again. You too, you will fight. The same place where your ancestors fell. Some of them, before they fell, they had a hope that one day, one day a warrior will rise from our clan. We will not all, you know, there are, people, there are people who know that what they are doing is wrong, but they don't have the capacity. They know that it's wrong, but the, the capacity to, to overturn the willpower of the flesh that is particularly always affronting the opinion of Satan, they don't have that capacity. So they will call another generation and say, you see this thing, what they do? No one. But the person that is advising you is still doing it because he does not have capacity. Hey, it's like paralysis. A paralyzed man inside his mind. If you are playing music, he will be dancing inside his mind. <laughs> there are some of us that don't know how to dance, but inside your mind, Jesus Christ. The kind of styles you do. These are how some people, this is how they, they sit down and contemplate the possibility of freedom and, and put that possibility in another generation and say one day, one day, somebody will rise from this clan. A warrior. A David will show up. Suddenly, it will become clear. It is not of he that will it. It is not of he that run it. It is of the Lord God that showeth mercy. 
you will not look like it. They will not even see you coming. There will be no sign to show that you are the deliverer. There's only, only, only two possibilities open to us now. It's either to do all our gra gra and eventually come to that particular junction, that valley where they mastered our ancestors. Or we will fight and win a victory that has never been recorded in our bloodline and initiate a new priesthood into our lineage. So you too, you can now say, as for me, you know, there was somebody that said, as for me, you too can say from, from me now, as for me and my own household, we will serve the Lord. You know the good thing about what I'm sharing with you? Your righteousness can flow into another generation, just as iniquity too can rub off. The impact of iniquity can create a disadvantage. Ah, since I was born, now I'm getting old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. There is something about the righteous that will affect his seed. Some of you, the kind of resistance you are facing now, it is the work of other, other, other men. It's too late to complain. Now you vow that your own life will become an advantage for those to come. I will say something in conclusion. There are people you will never, you will never be able to outsmart them. There are people you will never be able to outshine. There, there, is, an, there is a particular spirit-aided energy that guides them. And it's not their labor. They are not even honoring Jesus. You, you are serving Jesus. It is God that is still trying to pay the debt he owed their father. There is a generation that God, God is too faithful not to make sure he pays that debt. They, they have not even accepted Jesus yet. You, you have accepted Jesus. Ah, but for the sake of David, for the sake of David, Solomon will depart and God will say, but I remember my servant, David. You, you are not my servant. I have seen what you are doing, but I will, I will still keep covenant on account of another man's priesthood. Did you know who paid tithe to Melchizedek? It was Abraham, but they recorded it for his sons, Levi. If you peep into our genealogy, you will find that it's, instead of striking advantages for us, there, there are too many complications that we must, we, must, we must pay our way out of first before you can now have fresh air to know what is happening. It's a miracle service. The power of God is here to heal, to restore, and to deliver. Listen. Your faith is not needed on this day. You know, there are arrangements where we need you to build your faith up. What will work in this house this night is the sovereign will of God. That is not in, in consideration of laws and principles. It is that sovereign will that captured mercy into creation so that although the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice if satan takes you to that particular throne to accuse you and summon justice as a particular character god must abide by god brought another clause i would have mercy on whom i will have mercy so that he is not he is not he is not pushed he is not he is not limited to always dish out judgment it is sovereignty How many people will leave this meeting this evening? Suddenly you will realize it was never about hard work. You were already hard working. It's just that there is a spiritual potential that must be pushed out of your life. There are things that have registered their influence. There are, there are people here that will understand freedom for the first time in their life. They have never been free. You will leave this meeting now and realize for the first time you are going without any weight holding you down. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor. You know what he calls the way of sin? He calls it labor. 
the, the, the sinner thinks he's enjoying. Spirits look at him and say, there is a big weight on your shoulder. They say, and at heavy laden, come and enter rest. You are sleeping around, you know, jumping from one place to another. Your guys are hailing you. Spirits are looking at you like somebody with a big sack on your back. And it has changed your posture. You cannot stand straight. <laughs> ah, you are hard working. They say, you are laboring. Come, let's give you rest. Unfortunately, the labor is the labor of the fool. Before we make the utterances of the Lord and his power visit his people, I need you to register expectations. Don't just sit down. I need you to know exactly what must live, what must shift from this life. Because the power of God is truly here. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There will be deliverance. There will be freedom. Patterns that are older than you. Things you only saw in your parents that you are seeing now in your own life. And you are trying to have a change of story. And that thing is trying to force your life to be like those who bore you. The only way this night is that another altar must fight on your behalf. This night, I want you to register an expectation. Don't just, don't, don't just say, God, encounter me. Encounter me how? Somebody will ask the Lord. This yearning, this yearning for fornication, this yearning for alcohol, this ungodly appetite that I cannot overcome, is beyond me, is beyond me. Only you can help me now. You must involve an altar. If it has gone past your control, don't use willpower again because it's no longer in your own path to control it. Outside, outside, outside. Don't miss this encounter. Those following us online, the Spirit of God is jealous about his people tonight. Ushers, please go around, go around. Bring everybody that the Spirit of God comes upon. Bring them out. It's a good time to be Let your pastor, 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 Wherever you are, please don't get distracted. Don't let anybody distract you. This is what we will do. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Every property, every habit, every pattern, every possibility that you have not planted in my destiny that has flowed into my life. As I pray, separate me by fire. Can you cry? Separate us by fire.
fought by the same spirit. We set you free now. I rebuke the spirit of death. I rebuke the spirit of death. Out in the name of Jesus. Please give me your attention briefly. Now we challenge all forms of spiritual infirmities. From those who continue to see themselves naked, 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 to those who could not complete an examination, to those who continue to see that they are not prepared for what is coming, to those that something precious was stolen from. At the count of three, we will shout fire. At the count of three, we will shout fire. And the Holy Ghost, He will begin to invade people's lives. He will begin to deal with every infirmity, everything responsible for the outcome of people's lives. He will begin to uproot. Are you ready? One in the name of Jesus. Two in the name of Jesus. Three right now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fire upon you. We set you free now. Now, now, now. Now, in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. There are brothers, there are brothers in this house. Please give me your attention. There are brothers that I see. They are looking very old, yet they are young physically. There is wrinkles on their faces. I am seeing them. Life, life has been sapped from them. Life. Life. Oh. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you the resurrection and the life. Holy Ghost, from the back of this hall to the front, the left and the right, outside, outside, and those following us online, the Holy Ghost overpowers you now. The Holy Ghost overpowers you now. We speak life. We speak life. Anyone appointed to die, anyone that death has begun to lock around, 
I stretch my hands upon you now by the authority in the name of Jesus I declare the hold of that spirit everything that is linking you and that spirit I separate you by fire now I separate you by fire now I separate you now You are here and there is one infirmity or another one sickness or another that has continued to prove stubborn please come forward and behold the power of Jesus come Let the ushers help this ones. Lay your hands on them. Quickly, quickly. Be quick. Your name is higher than the highest. It's bigger than the biggest. Your name. in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost.
to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the scripture says, but I have come. I have come. For this reason was the Son of Man manifested so that he may destroy the works of the devil. The favor of God, his healing hands, has saturated us. Oh, Jesus. Anakazo, we're going to give Jesus a shout. How 
Outside, outside! Glory! Oh, outside! Glory to has put Satan to shame in this place. I was, I was just, you know, blown away beholding the healing power of God upon his people. I want just five testifiers to run up quickly. Among those God has healed, run forward, just run forward. Don't wait for anybody, come. Those of you that God has healed, come. Thank you. No, see, we said five. We said five. We said five. It's, it's more than five. Huh? It's five. I, I know why I said five. There's no time. Come, come, come. Sister, come. You know? Quickly. Your name and what God has done for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. My name is Faith. I want to thank God. I've been having this um, strange moving, like a moving sound in my ears for like four years now. And I've been battling with it. <laughs> Most times at night, I, I don't sleep well because of the sound. I'll just have to, you know, relax a bit. But then this evening, I, I came intentional. For this miracle service and immediately um apostle called out for um i quickly rushed out i was crying but i believed that god was going to heal me and immediately i stepped out back to my seat i i waved my head like this and i discovered that the sound was not there anymore. can you give god the praise four years four years listen an affliction for four years that has continued to keep her restless for four years cheaply in the presence of God. I don't know I don't know whether that pride that is in you is because you can do it. But if you know only God can do these things can you give him the glory? Can you give Jesus? Hey! That devil is a 
Costa! I tell you the truth by the authority in the scripture. Some people will start dancing now. And miracles, miracles, miracles will start. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrows and I am free. I can make hallelujah proof. I can make hallelujah parade. Because of Jesus, every day I shall parade. I will do every blessing by the end. Ah, hey, God, you are my special special. Hey, I need, I need. God has given me victory. He has given me victory.
listen. Listen. After, listen. After everything the devil has done, look at us now. We are still praising God. We are still praising God. Listen, listen, listen. Time is not on our side. Listen. You were not part of them. It was during the dance you came. Listen, listen. Wait now, wait, wait. After God healed her, she now started dancing. There was something that was around that she didn't know. That during the dancing, the Holy Ghost now dealt with it. When we said, when we said, give an offering to God in your dance, some, some, some senior uncles were like this. Let the people praise me. Let the people praise me. And the earth we yield for I increase. He said he came in. <laughs> no, he just came in. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I'm standing here to appreciate God. Seriously, I have nothing to say but to say thank you, Jesus. When they were praying, I was lying there. I felt a giant leaving me, literally. And I'm here to say thank you, Jesus. Can you give glory to Jesus?
to Sunday, it became, it, it increased the, the rate that I was using feverish increased um, to the extent I could not do the normal things I was doing. The way I was breathing became unusual. The, the, it was clear, the metamorphosis was clear, the change was clear. So, um, to the extent I couldn't come for service on Tuesday, and also I almost did not come for service today, but I managed to come. So, after the prayers, before the prayers, I had headache and also pain, uh, also the pains of injections and all of that. Um, so, after the prayers, everything vanished like. Can you give Jesus the glory? Praise the Lord. I'm here to thank God for what He has done to me in my life. A few years back, I've been having this abnormal chest pain. But my mom is a school, and my classmates normally she drinks hot water to class. So I normally drink her hot water. And after on Friday, because this is the second time I'm coming, I came here last week by late, but I didn't take things serious. So today, yesterday actually, I couldn't sleep in the night. If I want to lie down, as if everything has ever come out of my nose, so I will sit down and sleep. So, and I told my mommy about it, my mom just prayed for me. After she prayed, I slept. So today, at in the shop, my chest was just eating. I cannot, if I even cough, eh, my throat will give me like, as if I want to die. So, when Apostle called out for people that were sick, as I came out, they prayed for me, and I don't know, something just left me. I couldn't, if I talk now, I wish you heard me talking yesterday, you would not believe that I would stand there and talk today. Thank you. can see that Satan is not considerate of age when he afflicts people and so the mercy of God also looks beyond age when he commands deliverance I want those of us who are recipients of God's healing power this evening but don't have the opportunity to testify I want you to make sure you share your testimonies on this exalted altar, God's willing, next week, Friday, if Christ tarries. One minute, can we pray from wherever we are? Just appreciate the name of the God of signs and wonders. The one that has not left his people without a confirmation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever you are, inside, outside, those following us online, quickly package your offerings, package your tithes, and let's begin to pray on it quickly. It's a very, very strategic part of our service. Begin to pray on it. Don't just, don't just carry something and dump. Begin to pray on it. your attention. I insist 
that you give your attention. Please. And so, Father, over your people, we thank you for accepting us in your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you accept our substance also and increase our storehouses. Pour upon us a bountiful harvest that we don't have capacity to bear. Do this and take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can cast your offerings and your tithes and listen carefully to the few announcements, strategic announcements as we go. By the grace of God, Solemn Assembly is just two weeks from now. And so, we have been engaging very rigorous priesthood routines. We have been praying non-stop daily and we have been fasting non-stop daily. Please, if you have not joined that voyage, I am appealing to you be a part of what we are building. We want to sustain a posture that will be impossible to not receive the bounties of God that he has invested upon his servants when they come. And so please, we are also appealing to every well-meaning member of this great house. We are short of workforce because we know that what we currently have can serve the house but the multitude that are coming for that conference we will need many other hands you know to come together for us to quickly engage in preparation for the conference there will be many erudite graces of God some on the banner some not on the banner but it will be truly a convergence of egos and please make sure you maximize that convergence. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, tomorrow morning, we will be in Enugu for a very strategic and Kairos conference themed recalibration. It will be such a memorable convergence of God's people. God has an agenda and God insists he insists that it must be done according to his pattern. So he continues to carry our feet from border to border. I want all the brethren who are around that axis, you can see the flyer projected, clear your schedules, clear your itineraries, and let all roads lead to that address. We will be with you live tomorrow. The reason why we announce these things, we are aware as a house, that there are many fraudsters who put our faces on billboards and know that we are not coming and defraud the people. People come around and then they put up all kinds of flimsy explanations. We give these explanations to also confirm that we will be with you. By the grace of God, if Christ tarries tomorrow, we will be in the city of Enugu to bring perspective to the bodies of God in the season. Also, I want to on Sunday, Sunday morning, we would be in the city of Abuja. Okay, it will be posted on our respective social media handles. We will be at Redeemed Church at, a, at the province um, um, headquarters in Abuja for a conference tagged when a thousand youths pray. We are trusting the Lord that the revival fire is spreading across landscapes, spreading across regions. And so if you are in the city of Abuja, clear your schedules on Sunday. We will be with you and Jesus will be glorified. Please, if you are here and you have not woken up to the call of God for your life, you are already behind time. The army of the Lord we are speaking about, their, their period of manifestation is now. If you are telling yourself, when I grow up, there is no growth again, it's now. Manifest now or be silent forever. Overcome what you must overcome and break out. You see that pleasure, that pleasure. Choose destiny above pleasure. Choose it.
the light that the solemn assembly is just by the corner. I encourage everybody to join us in this journey of waiting on the Lord so that his purposes for this conference will not be cut short. God bless you. I love every one of you.